All right, good morning. Good morning, Sabran. Zoom, you hear me all right? Excellent. Wonderful. Great to see everyone. Sorry. Perfect. Maybe should we put them on the table? table? I think, yeah, I'll, I'll announce it. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's for now. That's this volume, perfect. Great, great. All right, Heron, let me hear me, all right? Excellent. All right, Trevor, say good morning, good morning. Let us begin. Another beautiful daf of Ksuvas ahead of us today. Begin by thanking our sponsors, our Tamil Torah sponsors. <clears throat> Shmuley Ali Wadinovitz for dedicating all the Shurman Drushals this month. In the Zuchus of an Aliyah for the Neshama of Shmuley's father, Haraf Peretz Avram, Ben Arab Bin Yamin Moshe, Zechron Levrach, we hope that the merit of our Tamil Torah, the Neshama have an Aliyah and the family a Nechama. Both say today's daf is daf test. We have a little bit of a uh, little bit of catch up to do. We left off on Daf Ches Amud Bey's 8B at the first of the wide lines, not the widest lines, the, excuse me, the intermediate lines. So I should say the first line after the end of the short lines. Okay, if that's helpful. All right, probably it's about the middle of that. So let's remember again, we left off in the middle of a, of a pretty dramatic story where the Gemara was telling us that Rav Chia Bar Abba lost a child. He lost a child. There's a machlokes. Did he lose a very young child? Was his son a young man? And he was the Rebbe. He was the he was the Rebbe of Reish Lakish's sons. Reish Lakish's sons. So Reish Lakish goes with his Turkoman Yehuda to pay a shiva visit. And remember again, it's interesting. They get there, and he, so Reish Lakish says to Yehuda you know, essentially offers some words of consolation. So we saw that interesting consolation that Yehuda offered, and the story, we're still in the middle of the story. So the Gemara goes right to Amrle, Kum Ema Milsa Kenegit Shvachu Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So Yish Lakish tells Yehuda, go and say something in praise of the Ribbono Shal Olam. And I will say, What's, what, what does this have to do with Nicho Mavelim? Right, remember again, they're at a Shiva visit. So why is, why is Abaye instructing why is Abayi instructing, I'm sorry, Rish Lakish. Why is Rish Lakish instructing his Torah on Yehuda to go ahead and say Shevach Ava Kaddish Baruch Hu? Because Rabbi say one of the things that we are instructed to do in the midst of loss is to go ahead and accept that which HaKadosh Baruch Hu does and to recognize on some level that everything that Hashem does is for the good. So in the midst of this tragic loss, Reish Lakish instructs Yehuda to go ahead and share some words of praise about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Amar lei, va'amar. So what does Yehuda say? So Yehuda gets up and he says, va'amar ha'godl berov godlo. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who is great in his greatness, adir v'chazak, again, I will say, who said this yesterday, that's what she's talking about, Lashon HaKadosh, is that you have words that all translate the same way. Adir v'chazak, great and strong, berov no ra'os, he brings back the dead with his words. He does incredible things beyond comprehension. And wondrous things beyond count. So this was, so again, just to point out, we do this contemporarily a little bit different at Alavaya. We have something called Tzidu Kadin. Tzidu Kadin is the acceptance of judgment. And it's a paragraph that the Avelim say. And the essence of the paragraph is summed up in the phrase, Hashem Nasan, Hashem Lakach, Yehi Shem Hashem Mevorach. Hashem has given, Hashem has taken, the name of Hashem should be blessed. The job of a Jew 
is the ability to say thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to recognize the greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to accept the judgments of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even in the midst of difficult times. That's what, that's what Reish Lakish was driving at over here. So the Gemara goes weiter. Amalei, Reish Lakish then says to Yehuda, this is beautiful, Kum mamilsa, can I get Avelim? Go and say something to the Avelim. Right? In other words, so now you've said something about the loss. You've said something about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Say something. Speak to the dynamic of the Avelim. So I will say, this is, this is, by the way, you see why this guy Yehuda, what had, had he had job security because he's this this stuff like like just understand you know listen you know sometimes you get asked to speak like like you know share a few words and okay so if you're a person who speaks often maybe it's not such a big deal but lemay said it's very like, to be put on the spot to say something so it's incredible that over here yehuda yehuda is being put on the spot by reish lakish and again being asked to share all of this profundity so say something about the avelim Pasach va'amar, he opened up and he said, Achinu, the most listen to how beautiful this is. Achinu hamiyugain be'evel. As that, our brethren, our brethren, ultimately again, who are downtrodden and overwhelmed by this loss. Tinu levavchem lach kor zos. Think about and contemplate the following. So listen to what he writes. Zos hi omedes la'ad. This which you are experiencing is for eternity. For eternity. Nesifu, so in other words, what, what's happening over here is Yehuda is speaking about the dynamic of death. And he's saying the dynamic of death is one that has been in this world forever. Nesifu, misheshes and eberishes. It is a pathway paved from the beginning of creation. Rabim shasu, rabim yishtu. Many have drank, drank, or drunk, 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 right? Many have drunk, right, from its waters, Rabim Yishtu, many will drink from its waters. Rish, the Gemara says, Rishonim, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Rabim Yishtu, Kimishta Rishonim, Kachmishta Achronim. The same way that the earlier ones have drunk of this, the latter ones will as well. So I'm say, the idea that what's happening over here, so ultimately Yehuda describing the dynamic of death as one that is here since the beginning of time. This is part of the passage of life. I would say sometimes we go through life being so scared of death, overwhelmed by death. What Yehuda is saying is one has to embrace the dynamic of death as part of the cycle of life. It is part of the fabric of creation. He goes on, he says, Achinu ba'an the chamas, so good. Achinu ba'an the chamas, yinachim eschem, my brethren, my brethren, the ba'an the chamas, he who is the master of all consolation should console you Baruch Menachem Avelim. Beautiful, beautiful. Am Rabbi, Abaye says back, Rabim Shasu Lema, Rabim Yishtu Lo Lema. So Abaye, Abaye corrects. Abaye corrected Yehuda. I guess Abaye was there, right? Abaye corrected Yehuda. And he said, you could say, you could say Rabim Shasu. You could say many have drunk from it. Don't say many will drink. Mishter Rishonim Lema. You could say it is the drink of the earlier ones. Don't say it's the drink of the later ones. Why not? I will say, what's wrong with saying this? is incredible. Because I will say, Reish Lakish himself. I just want to point out just the circle over here. Right? This is Yehuda, the Torgaman of, Yehuda, the Torgaman of Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish himself said, in the name of Rabbi Yossi, the Olam Ayiftach Adam Pivla Satan. A person should not go ahead and open up his mouth to the Satan. Which I will say means what? a person should not speak about the possibility of misfortune occurring. So I will say, so this is actually interesting. So I just want to point out what's happening over here is you have Yehuda the Torgamon. So you have Rishla, remember, they're going ahead and they're there to pay a shiva visit. Right, Rishlakish says to his Torgamon, say something, say something to the Avelim. Say something to the Avelim. So here I will say, so Yehuda comes along and speaks out the dynamic of death. And what is he essentially doing? He's saying to the Avelim, what you're going through, as painful, as uniquely painful as it feels for you, is part of the fabric of the human condition. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful words. Abaye says, don't speak, I understand if you want to talk about death as a historical reality, don't speak about the fact that everyone is going to experience death in the future. Don't do that. 
That's a yiftach piv satan. Don't go ahead and open up your mouth and discuss about the potential of misfortune. Before we get into that dynamic, I will say, so why does Yehuda say it? Because I will say, Yehuda will say, this is not, this is not an opening up my mouth to the satan. Why not? Why not? Because I will say, death is a reality. A yiftach piv satan means, do not go ahead and speak about the potential of misfortune that may or may not occur. The whole point that Yehuda was trying to say is that death is part of the is part of the fabric of life, and it is an unavoidable consequence of the human condition. All right. Anyway, Abai comes along and says, "Don't speak about Yiftach Pelu Satan." Micra, what's the pasuk? So, Kistom Hayinu La Mora Daminu. So, this is very interesting. The Gemara quotes the pasuk from Yeshaya. So the Pasik from Yeshaya says, Lule Hashem Cloud Israel says, Hashem, had you not spared us, we would have suffered the plight of Stom and Amora. Stom and Amora, of course, are the cities that are destroyed. Right after that, what does Yeshaya say to the Jewish people? Shimuk Divara Hashem Kitsine Stom. We'll say right after that, Yeshaya calls the people the princes of Stom. In other words, so the people say we would have been destroyed like stone. Oh, uh, you know what? Then Kishbarah who says, you know what? Now that you're talking about stone, you guys are kind of sodomite like in your behaviors, right? So you see from here that Atiftach Pela Satan, don't go ahead, don't go ahead and make reference to the potential for misfortune to occur. I will say, by the way, so, some, sometimes you, you see what this means, because sometimes people misapply this. People often think Al-Tiftach Pela Satan means that you can't speak about any potential misfortune because then it may occur. So that's superstitious, right? That, that's, that's, that's kind of like the misunderstanding of Ayin Hara. Al-Tiftach Pela Satan means that we'll say, the way it works in this world is that each of us has like a file cabinet of Averis. Let's be honest. I'm, Halavai, it's only one, right? <laughs> right? But right, even that one might have like five, five, uh, five levels. Right? So, we'll say, so what happens? In general, what we say is Chesh Baruch Hu loves us, so he keeps the file cabinet closed. Keeps the file cabinet closed. Don't do stuff in life that causes a Chesh Baruch Hu to open up the file cabinet. So that's what's happening over here. Klal Yisrael makes a reference. Oh, we were, we were almost destroyed like Stom and Amora. Hey, why, why, why bring up Stom and Amora? Then once, once they do it, Hashem who says the truth is, guys, you're actually not so far off from Stom and Amora. That's Al Tiftach Pela Satan. It's almost the same dynamic as Ayin Hara. Don't go ahead and behave in ways that causes Hashem Baruch Hu to closely look at and investigate your shortcomings and failures. It's beautiful. Now. Reish Lakish says, Reish Lakish says to Yehuda, say something beautiful corresponding to the people who come to be Menachem Avel. So the Gemara says, listen to this. Pasach va'amar, this is so beautiful. Achinu gomli chasadim and gomli chasadim hamachzikim beviso shal Avram Avinu. So Yehuda gets up and he says, he says, my brethren, Achinu, my brethren, gomli chasadim, those who do chasad, the sons of those who do chesed, who go ahead and hold on to the bris of Armavinu. Now, Bo said, this is actually very beautiful. We often think of the bris of Armavinu as what? As what? Bris Mila. Look at Rashi. Uh, look at Rashi. This is so beautiful. So, what's the real bris of Armavinu? The real bris of Armavinu was chesed. Chesed, Avram Avinu was kulo chesed, all chesed, all the time. So ultimately, again, those who do chesed are holding on to the verse of Avram Avinu. Achinu bal hagomel yishalim lechem gmulchem baruch ata baruch ata mishalim hagmul. My brethren, the one bal hagmul, the one who goes ahead and controls all reward, yishalim lechem gmulchem should reward you for all of your chesed baruch ata mishalim hagmul. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Amrale. So Yehuda's on a roll over here, right? So Reish Lakish says, Reish Lakish says, Amrale, kom eim amilsa keneged kal Yisrael. Give a bracha to all of Klal Yisrael. Pasach va'amar. 
Rebbe say Ches Amud Beis about eight lines up from the bottom. Pasach Va Amar Ribon Haolamim Pedei Vahatzel Malei Toshes Amcha Yisrael Min Adever. So Rebbe says, listen to this. So Yehuda gets up and he says, Ribon Haolamim, Master of the Universe, redeem and save and spare your nation Yisrael from Dever, pestilence, cherev, war, or sword, biza, plundering, shidafon, yerakon, drought, blight, mikol paronios, hamisrak shos, ubaos, laolam. From any misfortune was going to come into the world. Tara nikra, va'ata sana, kashmarachu, before they call out, may you be able to answer, baruch ata, otzer hamagefa. Incredible, incredible. Amr Ula, so I will say, I just want to point out, you know what else, you see something very important from here, which is, when in a base avel, a person should only be speaking meaningful things. You know, we'll say, we spoke about this problem, we saw Mo'ed Mo Cotton. People sometimes think when they go to pay a shiva visit, that it's their job to distract the avel, the job to distract the mourner. So you hear people speak about the most inane things. So first of all, number one, you're not going to distract the avel. When a person has suffered a loss, no matter what small talk you're going to make, you're not going to distract them from their loss. And furthermore, that's not the point of Shiva. The point of Shiva is to be steeped in your loss. The point of Shiva is to truly process your loss. And you see from here, again, Rish Lakish is coming into the base of El. I'll tell you something interesting. What's missing from this exchange over here? What's missing from this entire exchange? Right? There's no exchange, right? Who's silent this entire time? Rechiyah Abba. Which is, which, is, which is interesting, which is interesting. Now, maybe he wasn't silent. The Gemara is just telling us one side of the exchange. But what's interesting is it's also possible he lost a child. He lost a child, a traumatic, overwhelming loss. It's also possible that he has absolutely nothing to say. So when he has nothing to say, you have Reish Lakish telling Yehuda, give brachas, just give brachas and let's leave. Let's leave. Incredible. Both said, listen to the next Gemara. This is pretty wild. Pretty wild. Amr Ula, formerly Masnisa, Tana, Asara Koso Stiknu Chachamim Bebeis Ha'avel. Chazal instituted that you should drink 10 cups of wine in a base Avel. Now, not everyone, not everyone. You'll see again, Abba say it's actually referring to those partaking of a Sauda in a base Avel. Listen to this. Here we go. How do you get 10 cups of wine? Shlosha Kodem Achila three cups before you eat, because everyone knows you need three cups before the suda to loosen up the kishkas, right? To go ahead and make sure that the food is able to take. Three need three cups during the meal, during the meal, in order to allow the food to soak, right, in your stomach. Next, and then of course, you need the four after the meal. Why four after the meal? It's not for you, it's for benching. Echad keneged hazon, ve echad keneged birk hasa'aretz, ve echad keneged bone Yerushalayim, ve echad keneged hatova hametiv. So you have one cup corresponding to each of the brachos of benching. So a total of, a total of 10 cups, three before you eat, three during the meal, and four corresponding to each of the brachos of benching. Get ready for this. Hosifu alehem arba. They decided to add on another four cups. Another four cups. Why four cups? Keneged Chazon. is actually very beautiful. Keneged Chazon Ha'ir. One corresponding to the Rose. Now, who are the Chazon? Look at Rashi. Keneged Chazon Ha'ir. Tziknu lahem bracha alav. Lefisha yu shamashi ha'ir lis asik b'meisim b'shar tzarech etzibar. Now, both say, the Chazonim are the Gaboim. So they added on another, another cup for the Gaboim. They both say, why the Gaboim? Why the Gaboim? Because the Gaboim were the ones who often made the arrangements for the Shiva home, the timing of the Leviah Avron. This is, this, this cup, this cup is mamish for the Gaboim, right? The Gaboim, the Gaboim were in charge of everything. So they made sure everything ran correctly in the Kila. So one cup, Kenege the Gaboim. Next, the Echad Kenege Parnos one for the Gvirim, the wealthy individuals of the city. They both say, beautiful looking Rashi. We'll say, this is beautiful. The wealthy people were often the ones who picked up the bill for the, for, for the poor who were unable to afford burial expenses. 
burial expenses. Listen, by the way, I will tell you just because sometimes we don't appreciate the community that we live in. You know, we have one funeral home, Levinson's, and, and I will tell you, one of, one of the incredible chasadim they do is that when there is someone who is unable to afford a levaya, they, they, they will pick up as much of the cost as they, as they need to, which is as someone who's lived in other communities, you do not find that. You'll find communities that fundraise for levayas, absolutely. But to, to have, again, it is definitely the, one, of the, one of the perks of being a monopoly. Baruch Hashem. But, 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 but Lamaisa, but la it's, it's an incredible, incredible thing. So in, in yesterday, you didn't, you didn't have a funeral home like that. So who picked up the tab for the levayas? So the Ashiram, the Gvirim, the wealthy people of the community. So therefore, again, there was one cup for the wealthy people. Ve'echer keneged beis ha-mikdash. One, for, one cup for the Beis HaMikdash, because I was say, now what does the Beis HaMikdash have to do with this? So I was say, look at Rashi. Tiknu alav birchas nichumim, shinachmu hamakum bevinyanum ayavelu shalom esal. So I was say, it makes sense. Because remember, this is in a Beis Avel. This is in a Beis Avel. So in a Beis Avel, where we're mourning over personal loss, we have another cup reminding us of the loss of the Beis HaMikdash. Next, the Echad Kineged Rebbe Gamliel. We'll say, one cup for Rebbe Gamliel. Now we'll see why that is. We'll say, so now we'll say, in a base of all, we've got 14 cups of wine, right? So says the Gemara, shockingly, right? So we'll say, it turns out, people started getting drunk, right? I know, I know. <laughs> Who would have thought? People started, which obviously is never good, but certainly in a base of all is not good. So they went back to the 10 cup model. Right? So, we'll say, so apparently the 10 cup model worked. We'll say, also, all kidding aside, understand wine consumption was very different, right? Wine was a regular staple, was a regular staple drink at every single meal. So they went back to 10 cups. To which the Gemara says, my Rabbi Gamliel, what's the cup corresponding to Rabbi Gamliel? What is that about? So the Gemara says, we'll say, this is so beautiful. We saw this in Moid Cotton and it's so profound. This Sanyo, Barishona Haisa Otsa Sameis, Kasha likrov av yoser mimisaso. I will say, listen to this. It used to be that paying for funeral expenses was more painful than death itself. Meaning what Rabbi was saying, people used to make levayas like chasanas. Like chasanas. Meaning what? You'd rent the hall, beautiful casket, nice tachrichim. You'd bring in like, uh, you know, you'd bring in a singer, right? Because also they used to have, they used to have. So like the, the, the singers would do weddings and levayas, right? So in other words, it was like, a, I guess you could buy a package maybe. Right? So, so, so the mice, again, there was incredible financial pressure to put on, to put on a top-notch levaya. To the point that what happened? The most listen to how profound this is. People would literally go ahead and leave the bodies of their loved ones by the side of the road, and they would run away. Now, both say, because what happens once the body is on the side of the road, what does it become? A mes mitzvah. Once it's a mes mitzvah, whoever finds it has, I say, I just, I just want to point out, I just want to point out how, how profound this is. Both say, you say to yourself, that's crazy. I say, is that any crazier than taking out a second mortgage to make a wedding? Is, is, that, is, that, is that any crazier than putting yourself in debt for 30 years to make a five hour event, yet it's nice and b'chol yom that people put themselves into ridiculous debt to go to make a chasa. Again, let's say this is one of the things that we have to, if you have money and you want to make a beautiful thing, fantastic. But Lamaisa, that we've created a situation where people feel a social pressure to be able to put on simchas that they cannot afford is a terrible, terrible communal disservice that we have done to ourselves. This is not something new. This is not something new. This has been part of the story of the Jewish people, right? Apparently for a very long time. Achibar Rabbi Gamliel, the Nag Kalos Biatsmo. Rabbi Gamliel came along, and I will say, what did he do? What did he do? Nag Kalos Biatsmo. Nag Kalos Biatsmo means, I will say, he arranged his own Levaya, and he said, I'm having a very simple Levaya. Vot Siyo Beklepeshtan. And they went ahead and they took him out in simple, simple linen tachrichim, simple linen shrouds. After he did it, everyone conducted themselves like this as well. Amr Papa Rapapa says, That's why today Rabbi say we bury the dead even in a piece of canvas that's only worth a zuz. Happens we, we don't use canvas, we use linen shrouds. But I will say the idea that contemporarily a levaya 
is the simplest of the simple. The simplest of the simple, a regular casket, if you use a casket, right, regular shrouds, that's because of Rabbi Gamil. Rabbi said, by the way, and therefore they used to drink a cup, right, a lechayim to Rabbi Gamil, so to speak, for helping to affect change with better practice. Rabbi said, but you see something incredible here. It's also an incredible din in leadership, which is that if you want to affect change, be the change. Be the agent of change. You know, we often speak about change, and this should change, and that should change, and all this should change. And but the only problem is we're willing to talk about it. We're just waiting for someone to be the actual agent of change. And I want to say what the Gemara, what Rabbi Gamil teaches us is, be the change you want to see occur. Be the change. Be the agent of change. Be the vehicle of change. That's how you affect change. Obviously, Rabbi Gamil has the position. Right? And Rabbi Gamliel has the power and the authority. And when he does something, people watch Rabbi Osai, you'd be surprised. We, we all have a sphere of influence. And if we truly feel that certain change has to be made, be that change. Incredible. Let's go weiter. Am Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Osai, back to Ksuvis. Back to Ksuvis. Am Rabbi Lazar, Haomer, top of Tess. Haomer, Pesach, Pasuach, Matsasi. Rabbi Osai, a man marries a woman. And he says, Pesach, Pasuach, I found her, which means he's claiming there's no Besulim. He's claiming there was no person. I both say, look at Rashi. Haomer Pesach Pasuach Matsasi. The Tainas Tamim Eino. Then I both say, in this case, he's not claiming that there was no dam. He's not claiming that there was no blood. Kigon Shimim Mishpachas Dorkiti Shein La Dam Besulim. O Shenev Dami Menu Mapa. Voloyadim Hayadamim Love. So I both say, so again, right now, there's no claim of blood. For whatever the reason, we'll discuss maybe the sheet was lost. Or we'll see that there were certain families that just did not have dam besulim hymen or blood. See, he's claiming Pesach, Pasuach, Matsasi. Literally, again, I found no besulim, right? Ultimately, again, there, there, was no, there, there, was, there, was, there was no blockage to penetration. And therefore, Halach HaMais is claiming that she was not a besula. So the Gemara says, So Ne'eman Ostralov, they both say he's believed to answer her upon him. Now, understand what's happening over here. They both say, Is he believed? to answer her status? Is he believed to answer her status? No, he's making a claim. Now, what can he do? He's believed Lagabe himself. So essentially, he's making a claim. What's the claim he's making? You're not a basula. Implicit in that claim that he's making is what? You committed adultery. Now, both say, he's not believed to label her, an, to, to label her an adulteress, right? That is not believed, that's a claim. That requires ethos. What he's saying is, Shavi anav sheikhati chadi isura. You could make something prohibited to you, and you're believed. Legabi, you look at Rashi. Never on the Ulster love. V'avah pishin adavar azayah chalis bara ela al piv. Legabi nafshe havi mehemin l'shavi alei chaticha di isura. Avah laf. See the ksuv lo mehemin. So both say he's believed to make her aser onto him. Okay. If you think she committed adultery, then she is asura to you. She's not chasasham labeled as an adulteress. She's not going to go ahead and lose her ksuva. But there's a concept of shavi anaf sheikhaticha di isura. You can make something asur to you. Sigmar says, ba'amai. But why is that? Svek svekahu. We will say it should be a double suffix. What's the double suffix? Suffix taktov, suffix in taktov. So first of all, suffix number one, maybe she did have relations with someone else. But maybe it happened during Arison. Maybe it happened after, but before Arison. And if it happened during Arison, Suffolk Ba'one, Suffolk Baratzon. Maybe she was violated against her will. Maybe she was complicit. So because you have a Svek Svek, I will say in general with a double Suffolk, we're generally able to be Makel. If that's the case, even if he claims Pesach, Pasuach, Matzasi, I found an opening, Lemaisa again, she should still be permitted to him. Possibility number one is where he's a Kohen. So we'll say, remember again, a Kohen, his wife is a surah to him if she has relations with another man, unfortunately, even if she's violated. So therefore, in that case, there would only be one Sefeik. The other possibility is that maybe we're talking about, maybe we're talking about a Yisrael, and we're talking about a young girl whose father accepted Kiddushin for her less than three years old and one day. I will say, by the way, I just want to point out, because, I, when, we, because when we speak about these, these conversations about marrying a minor and the uh, young girl and the Gemara talking about having relations with a minor, so I will say, so obviously we read these things, and just to be honest, it's, it's shocking to us. 
it's shocking to us, right? And it's, it's, it's overwhelming to us. And again, to be clear, obviously, from the lens in which we look at it, it's unequivocally, overwhelmingly, and undeniably wrong. Wrong, to, to be very clear. Obviously, the Gemara is dealing with a different system, a, a different societal system, just like we've seen the concept and construct of marriage is something fundamentally different. This notion of marriage at a young age, I will point out that if you remember again, we did see in Yevamis how the Gemara spoke about the idea that even if one is marrying a younger girl, one should not consummate that relationship until she becomes a Bogaris. Granted, Bogaris is 12 years old in six, in six months. It's not like it, for our sensitivities, it's not like it fundamentally changes. But I just want to point out that Chazal had that sensitivity to a young girl as well, even though technically it might be permitted, but Lamai said it had that sensitivity. So I just, it's, I, I've, spoke, no, I've had this conversation with a number of you offline. It's important to, to mention it because again, we're learning it from the construct of Chazal, but it's important to, to acknowledge the fact that, that Lamaisa obviously contemporarily, this has fundamentally and wholly changed. It's important also to acknowledge that it's a bit shocking to our contemporary understandings and sensitivities to read things like this. But Lamaisa Chazal shared that sensitivity that was reflective of their time. But Lamaisa, again, we're looking at a totally different construct. So the Gemara goes right there. The Gemara says as follows. The Gemara says, my Kamash Malan. So fine, what are you teaching me? So Tanina, we learned this already. If a man says to a woman, you have betrayed, betray my man says to a woman, we're married. She says, no, we're not. I've actually had couples in my office like this, right? You know, so, so, right, right, we're married, right? No, no, we're not. So, so here they have mamish, like here they're arguing about whether or not they're married. So what's that law? It's interesting. So what's that look in this case? He can't marry any of her relatives, but she can marry his relatives. Meaning what, I will say. In other words, you can make a claim. You can make a claim. But if you have an unsubstantiated claim, the only person that claim affects is who? Is who? Is you. Because there's a concept of Shavi Anav Sheikh So I'll give you a perfect, I'll give you a perfect example. Right? I have a steak on the table. I have a steak on the table. And I say, that steak is treif. And you say, I bought it from Wasserman. What are you talking about? I just bought it. So I'll say, what's talacha? Huh? What's talacha? Huh? Right? Can you eat it? Can you eat it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In other words, my claim doesn't have the ability to create a halachic reality for anyone beyond myself. So now what we're saying is, a guy says, a guy says, Pesach, Pasuach, Matsasi. She's not a Basula. Okay. She's not a, you're, you're not bringing a dos. You're, you're claiming she's not a Basula. Okay. So effectively what's happened over here is you've made this woman usher to you. You have it right. Legabe her. She gets her ksuva. She's a regular woman. You haven't changed her status. So is that what you're coming to teach us? If that's it, we've learned that before. So Ma'adatema, Hasam Devadai Kimle. So I'm going to say, you might have thought like this. When do we say in a situation where, we, where, where the man could be sure about his claim? Like where he claims, I married you. He's sure about that. We'll say, maybe in this case over here, in this case of Pesach Pasuach, we'll say, here's what's going to be interesting about the case of Pesach Pasuach Matsasi. When a guy comes along and he says, Pesach Pasuach, right? There wasn't, there wasn't open, in other words, there, there, there was no Besulim. And we'll say, you know, what do we say to him? What do we say to him? We kind of give him a little bit of a look. And we say to him, how do you know? Right? In other words, what level of experience are you coming into this first interaction with that you know what this is supposed to feel like and what it's supposed to be like? So we kind of, how do we say, look at him askance? Right? We give him a little bit of a look, wondering, like, wow, you certainly have a lot of knowledge for someone who just got married and was supposedly in yeshiva this entire time, right? In other words, how, 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 how do you know all of this exactly? Ah, it's a must have been, you learned dafyomi, you learned ksuvis, right? Again, there's no pictures in the Gemara, right? So, so what, what, what exactly, right? So what exactly, so I will say, so the Gemara, and this, this is actually, all kidding aside, this is going to come up. This is going to come up. So, so what the Gemara is pointing out over here is, maybe they claim that Pesach, Pasuach, maybe we don't, maybe we essentially we tell them, listen buddy, you don't know what you're talking about. 
You know, you, you might think you know what you're talking about. You might think that you know what this is, what, what the resistance is supposed to be like. But Lamaisa, maybe what you're claiming is just not really true because you're not experienced enough to know what this is. So I was like, Kamash no, Kamash look, if the guy makes a claim and he says, Pesach Pasuach Matsasi, at the end of the day, we accept his word for him. We're not going to accept his word for her. In other words, her status is not going to change. But look, you're claiming your wife is not a basula, which essentially is you're making a quasi-claim of adultery. She's a surah to you, but Lamaisi, you have not changed her status. Did Rabbi Lazar actually say this? Ultimately, again, that a woman could become the aseris to her husband based on the statement of her husband, to which the was Rabbi Lazar, Eina isha ne'eseres al-bayla ela iske kine yestira. Yet Abbas Rebbe Lazar said, the only way a woman becomes a surah to her husband is through kinui and stira. Now, we'll see, we're going to see this in Mesech Sota. Right? Remember again, in Mesech Sota, we know that there's a concept. Kinui means a husband warns his wife not to be alone with a certain man. Stira, then what? She's alone with that man. And kinui and stira take place with the presence of Edom, with the presence of witnesses. So I will say, Rebbe Lazar said, a woman only becomes asura to her husband through kinui and stira. And like the event that occurred, I will say that is a reference to the event of David and Bathsheba. We'll discuss that. The Tizbara, boy, one second, David and Bathsheba. The Tizbara, the Maise of David and Bathsheba happened with kinui and stira. There was no kinui and stira there. Vaod, mi asura. Furthermore, it was Bathsheba. Asura to David, to which the Gemara says, no, 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 halo kasha, halo kasha, what this one means to say. Here we go. Eina isha ne'asaras al-bayla, ela al-iske kinu yistira. A woman only becomes asura to her husband if there's kinu yistira, if there is warning and seclusion, in other words, warning about a particular man, and then seclusion with that very man. The Gemara says, ela iske kinu yistira. And the proof you can bring to this is from the episode of David and Bathsheba. Where there was no warning and seclusion. In other words, Uriah Bathsheba's husband, never warned her, so to speak, about David and Melech. And therefore, again, ultimately, Bathsheba was not prohibited to David. And I will say, the story of David and Bathsheba is much more complex than what's being brought down over here, but we'll just go with it for now. So the Gemara says, Mika makam kasha. They both say, here's our problem. Here's our problem. We just said Rabbi Lazar is saying that what? Homer Pesach Pasuach. Reuven comes to Beisdin. He marries Rachel. And he says, Pesach Pasuach Matsasi, which essentially means no besulim. What is he making? He's making a claim. She must have committed adultery. What did Rabbi Lazar say? What did Rabbi Lazar say? What did Rabbi Lazar say? He's ne'eman. He's ne'eman. Lo'osra alav. He's believed to make her Rachel Asr to him. To him. So now we have Rabbi Lazar saying the only way a woman becomes Asura to her husband is how? Through Kinui and Stira. Through Kinui and Stira. Okay, so I will say, so what's going on over here? To which the Gemara says, Mikom makom kasha, kinu yistira in, Pesach pasuach lo. Well, the time meich, kinu yistira in, edim lo. I will say, here's the other problem. The other problem is, kinu yistira is clearly not the only way that a woman becomes asura to her husband, right? How else does a woman become asura to her husband? Ultimately, again, through edim, right? If you have testimony that a woman was mizana, that a woman committed adultery, that also prohibits. So kinu yistira is not the only mechanism. El haki karaz, what it means to say, here we go. Eina isha ne'eseres al-bayla be'ed echad, ela bishnei edim. A woman doesn't become asura to her husband through an eid echad. I will say, right, let's say Reuven is married to Rachel, Eid Echad shows up and says, I saw Rachel being Mizana, having adultery with Shimon. Okay, I mean, not okay, but Lamaisa, it's an Eid Echad, it doesn't do anything. A woman only becomes a surah to her husband with two Eidim. Rabbi Laz is coming to say is, Ukinu Yistira, Afilu Be'eid Echad Nami. Oh, so Rabbi say now when it comes to Kino Yistira, ultimately, you're going to say, so we're going, we'll see this in Mesecha Sota, but what the Gemara is suggesting is as follows. That Allah could very well be that if a wife is warned in front of two witnesses, then if there's subsequent seclusion, even in the presence of Eid Echad, that could go ahead and answer her to her husband. Upesach pasuach kishnei Eidim Domi. Wow. And Rabbi Lazar will say that when a man makes a claim of Pesach pasuach, 
Pesach Pasuach is like is, is as powerful as a claim as two witnesses. Then I both say to be clear, when we say that Pesach Pasuach is like two witnesses, the only person Pesach Pasuach impacts is who? Is who? The husband. Because remember again, I both say. Shadi anaf sheikhaticha di isura. Right? The husband has the ability to go ahead and halach alamaisa, halach alamaisa, ask for something upon himself. But the claim of Pesach Pasuach is like two witnesses. So the Gemara says, Gemara says, Vichi tema, maisa shem ne malo asra. So we'll say, if that's the case, then when David had relations with Bathsheba, she was technically still married to Uriachiti. If that's the case, why, why wasn't, why wasn't Bathsheba Asura to David? Why wasn't she Asura to David? To which the Gemara says, um, okay, fine. Why wasn't she Asura to David? Hasam One Sava. Did I both say Bathsheba was taken against her will? Right? She was summoned by the king. She didn't really have a say in what is it that occurred. I both say, now, by the way, whether or not the act of relations, she was compliant in the act of relations, the point over here is the entire Maisa, right? The, she was summoned by David Amel, she was summoned by the king. When you're summoned by the king, there's not really much of a choice. So it was against her will. For the Marvi Bar Seima, Kihad Amr Bishwab Bar Nachmani, Amr Yonas Rabbah, this is very interesting, Amr Beis, call Hayot Seyed Melchames Beis David, get Christus Ko Seyed Le Ishto. I will say this is fascinating. The other possible, I will say, and th this is a very interesting technical answer. David, David Amalek is going to see institute a very interesting practice. That when his soldiers went out to war, before they went out to war, every soldier gave his wife a get. Now, what it was is, it was like a conditional get. And it was the type of get that says, if I don't come back from battle after a certain amount of time, I don't come back by so-and-so date or by so-and-so time after the war. So ultimately, again, this get is chal, this get takes effect, effect retroactively. They will say, what's the godless of that? What's the godless of that? You prevent any type of aguna situations. So you have to imagine, like in the wars of yesteryear, every war brought aguna situations with it, right? Every single war. So Lamai said this was an incredible etza to prevent aguna situations in the aftermath of battle. Kayotse le milchames pays David get krisis kosev le ishto. Now how does this help? How does this help? Because Rabbi say, remember again, Uriah Hiti, who was Bathsheba's husband, at the time that David sent for her, dies at the end of the story. Dies at the end of the story. So Rabbi say, the fact that he dies in battle at the end of the story. The fact that Uriah died, he fell at the end of battle, means that what? The get was triggered retroactively, which means that on a technical level, when David was with Bathsheba, she was no longer a married woman. Now, I will say, I, I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. David is held accountable for this Aveira. The difference just is on a technical level, it wasn't adultery. They are on a Again, was it a chait? Was it a chait? Uh, absolutely. That's why the Gemara says, Kala Omer David Chata Eina Elatoa. If you say that David Amalek sinned, you're making a mistake. In other words, if you say that David Amalek committed adultery, that's factually incorrect. That's actually incorrect. Did David HaMelech make a mistake? I will say, the baby died. The baby that he had with Bathsheba died. He's given three different punishments. The baby dies, he's stricken with illness, and there's going to be a rebellion from within his home. Shalom. That's what the Navi says. And the Navi says all three of these things are because of what you did with Bathsheba. David HaMelech also becomes the paradigm of tshuva. Because when David is confronted by Nasan Hanavi about what, did, what he did, what did David HaMelech do? He becomes the paradigmatic example of tshuva. Chatasi Lelokim. He owns it. David HaMelech is the, is, the, is the quintessential paradigmatic bal tshuva. Because I will say, both of us, when confronted with something we did wrong, usually do what? Is there's a whole process. Right? There's denial, right? There's denial. And then after denial, right, there's there's ultimately again rationalization. After rationalization, there's quasi-acceptance. I should say first then there's right, there's denial, there's there's rationalization, there's blame, quasi-acceptance. Sometime later on, right? There, there's some level of acceptance. David Amalek out of the gate, out of the gate. He's confronted, Khatasi, I did it. I did it. I'm sorry. I own that he is the quintessential Baal Tshuva. So I will say, so therefore the Gemara says, but because technically Bathsheba wasn't married because there was a retroactive get, therefore she was not Asura to David HaMelech. I will say, by the way, where did David get this idea from? 
to go and institute a get for every soldier who goes out to war. This is actually very interesting. Dirsiv, second law in Testament base, Dirsiv, Bes Achecha, Tifko the Shalom. I'll say the Pasik over here, the Gemara's quoting is from Shmuel Aleph. Bes Achecha, Tifko the Shalom. So we'll say this is during the war with Goliath, during the war with Goliath. David is just a kid. He's not in the army, he's a shepherd. So Yishai, David's father, sends him to his brothers, who are all valiant generals. Go out to your brothers. Go see how your brothers are doing. Take their Aruba. Take their Aruba. So the Gemara says, What's Aruba? Take the things that connect your brothers to their wives. Take their kiddushin, or take their kiddushin, and have them write a get for their wives. So say, David was instructed as a young boy by his father Yishai to go to his brothers and tell their brothers in the name of the father, each of you write a get for your wife in the event that you don't come back from battle. So David saw this practice with his brothers and with his father. And what did David do when he became king? And now commander in chief of the armed forces institutionalize this practice. Whoever goes out to war ultimately gives a get to his wife. I'll tell you something absolutely beautiful. The Kotzker, the Kotzker, says something amazing. He says, what's the Pshat? He says, what's the Pshat? He says, Kala Yotzi Lemochemes Beis David, get Christus Kosei. Whoever goes ahead and gives, go, goes, goes out to war, Lemochemes Beis David, anyone who went out to war of David HaMelech, gives a get to his wife. So the Kotzker says, Everyone thinks about this from the vantage point of the wife, right? Now, what's the goal over here? To prevent aguna. The Katska says there's another reason. There's another reason why. When you go out to battle, you have to have your mind on one thing and one thing only, which is what? The battle. So the Katska says it's actually profound. Giving a get to your wife before you went ahead and went out to war was also compartmentalizing your family. That it was saying to your wife, for the next little bit, when I go out on the battlefield, I'm not thinking about you. I love you, I'm not thinking about you. Because if I think about you, I'm not thinking about the battle. If I think about you, I'm not thinking about my fellow in arms. If I think about you, I'm not thinking about the enemy. So the Kutzker says, giving a get, giving a get, ultimately again, was a way of also allowing the soldier to have singular focus on the matter at hand. And I was, I was thinking about this Kutzker and what an incredible idea because the Kutzker is also giving us the recipe to success that sometimes in order to be successful in life, there has to be tunnel vision. You know, we speak about tunnel vision as being a bad thing, and sometimes it is, but sometimes in order to be successful in life, you have to have precision focus on what it is that you want to accomplish. And sometimes what that means is, give, I, 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 it doesn't mean giving a get to your wife, I just, I just want to be clear, <laughs> right? But, right but, but, but sometimes, and it doesn't mean not taking her calls either. And that, 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 that's not, that's not a marriage thing. I, I, I mean that, that sometimes what it means is you have to shut other stuff out. And sometimes it's difficult because the other stuff is important also. And, right, and if you think about it, in life, on any given day, there's a whole bunch of important stuff. But at almost all times, there's the one thing that's most important that has to get done. There's the one thing that's most important that really rises above everything else. And the problem I will say is, Often in life, I'm trying to accomplish a whole number of important things simultaneously. And so you can get some things done, but it doesn't get done in the right way. If you have a Muhammad based David, and that's your primary objective, and you have to go to war, and you have to be successful, get Krisus Kosev Leishto. You have to give a get Krisus. You have to give a get to everything else in life. You have to take everything else in life. You're important, you're important, you're important, you're important. You're not important now. You know, right, right now, right now, this is the thing I need to focus. I will say, by the way, and the right now might be for an hour, right? It might be for a day. It might be for a week. But in times in life when I have to be successful, there has to be the singular focus and the get Christos has to be given to everything else. Incredible. So the Gemara goes back there. The Gemara says, Amra Bayi Af Ananami Tanino. We also learn this. We'll say, here we go. Incredible Gemara. Basula gets married on a Wednesday. So the Gemara says, Basula only gets married for on a Wednesday, not on a Thursday. So I'll say, opening Mishnah on Ksuvas. So my Taima, what's the reason for that? Mishum ikruri daita. Because we'll say, we saw in the first Mishnah, what are we concerned about? We're concerned that Allah if the wedding night comes, he finds that she's not a Basula. 
What's going to happen? We want him to be able to go to Bezin the next morning. If halacha lamaisa, again, there's time between the wedding night and the next time Bezin is in session, ikrure daita, literally, again, he's going to cool down. We spoke about this on the opening da. People have a way of just come, becoming resigned to certain things. Sensitivities are dulled. He's going to accept this reality. So the Gemara says, ulamai. What do we, con- let, let, okay, let's drill down, but what are we concerned about? Ilamais of laksuva. If we're nervous that Lamais is going to give her the Ksuva property, you know, as well, so what are we concerned about? That come the wedding night, he's going to, he's going to give her a Ksuva property. Because I will say, by the way, sometimes you could have, we're not used to this model, but you could have a situation like this where upon marriage, husband gives his wife the property that is representative of the Ksuva. So, right, he gives, in other words, why would a man do this? Well, because remember, again, if you're a husband, if you're a husband, anything and everything you own and will ever own is encumbered by the Ksuva which is difficult because Lamai said, if you want to transact business with other properties, you want to have lean free properties. What you could do as a husband is ultimately designate what we call an apotiki, apotekai, right? Which means I can give my wife an item and I can say, I love you, here's your ksuva, right? I hope you don't collect it for until 120, right? But Lamai saw, Here's anything and everything you will ever need to satisfy that ksuva debt, and that is potentially able to lift it. So, what are we concerned about? I'm not saying that's that case. What are we concerned about? That, that he gave her the ksuva on the on the night of the wedding, and that's what. Now he's going to go to Basin a couple of days later, and he's not. What, is that what we're concerned about? So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, Nesavla. Who cares? That's just money. That's just money. Ella la osra alav. We'll say no. What we're concerned about is that if the wedding night comes, and if he finds that she's not a basula. And then Lamai said again, we need him to go to Bezin to be Mavara that. And if Bezin is not open for a little while, he may just say, forget it. Forget it. Let's just move on. So I will say he's making a taina. What's the taina? My love, the katan taina's pesach pasuach. I will say, is he not making in other words, what what is the taina? Right? What what is what is our Mishnah? When our Mishnah says we want you to get married on the Wednesday, so that if something's wrong, you can go to Bezin Thursday morning. What's the thing that's wrong? Is it not talking about a case of Pesach Pasuach? Isn't that the claim? Lo, dikato and tainas damim. No, 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 no. The Mishnah is saying over here, what is he making? Look at Rashi, right across in Rashi, tainas damim. The tainam ibuverasi. He's making a taina that there was no blood from the Biarishona. There was no blood. Pesach Pasuach, Emolacha Lo Kimle. They will say, no, no, no. Our Mishnah is talking about a claim where he's making the claim there was no blood from the Biri Shona. They will say, but a claim of Pesach Pasuach, that's not our Mishnah. Why not? I will say, this goes back to the thing we said before. Because Pesach Pasuach is an uncertain claim. Why is it an uncertain claim? Because we could attribute that to his, to his novice intimacy level, right? To, we, we could say, you don't know what you're talking about, right? Because you don't have experience in this area of life. That's why what he's making over here is a definitive claim. There was no blood. That's a definitive claim. Pesach Pasuach, however, may not be a definitive claim. So Rabbi Yehuda comes along in the name of Shmuel. So, so where we're holding right now is we have Rabbi Lazar saying that if you claim Pesach Pasuach, he is believed to ask his wife upon himself. We're just challenging that a little bit because Lemaisa, Lemaisa, our Mishnah doesn't seem to be talking about Pesach Pasuach. Our Mishnah is talking about where after the Biri Shona, there's no blood. There's no blood. So he's coming to Bezin saying, listen, I don't know what, I'm just telling you, there was no blood from the Biri Shona. What, what is that? What is that? But it could be that according to our Mishnah, if you were to claim with Pesach Pasuach, we kind of pat him on the back, put our arm around his shoulder, and say, ah, you know, you're a little new to this, right? So, so Lamaisa, right, right, go home, everything is fine. Everything is fine. So I will say, we just have no raya from the Mishnah. So the Gemara says, let's go back there. I will say for another minute, let's go back there. So the Gemara says, now I will say, I just took it up a notch. If a man says, Pesach Pasuach Matsasi, he is believed to deprive his wife of a ksuva. Now I will say, now this is strong. Now this is much stronger. Why is this much stronger? Because up until now, what we were saying is Pesach Pasuach at most has the ability to what? To answer her on him, to change his status regarding her. Now we're saying Pesach Pasuach even has the ability to answer her in her ksuva. Am Rav Yosef, my Kamash, when we learn this, Tanina, we learn this, we'll stop over here for today. We'll pick up with this case, a great, great case. Shabbos say, no, our first week of ksuvas, Incredible, overwhelming, fantastic, beautiful. Shkayach and a good night of Shabbos, everyone.